Coming up on this championship edition of Flash Talk, brought to you by Brian Heating and Cooling, we sit down with head women's basketball coach Todd Starkey to talk about their three magical days in March and how they cut down the nets inside Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. We'll talk with Bryce Biggin about their MAC championship and how they're going for another title this weekend at Ball State. Plus, head football coach Kenny Burns stops by to talk pro day and the start of spring football. As always, we take a look around what's going on here at Kent State University, and that's all coming up in a flash. Welcome into our championship edition of Flash Talk. We're brought to you by Brian Hing and Colleen Dan Griffin alongside Coach Todd Starkey. And Coach, if only we had some stuff to talk about. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's not, not a whole lot going on these days, right? <laughs> Well, man, what a wonderful three days in, in March for you guys. And uh, first and foremost, uh, congratulations. I, I can't imagine you've slept much over the last week or so. Well, I mean, up in Cleveland, I didn't sleep very well. But after the championship, I slept like a baby. So it was uh, it was a great experience, obviously, in the MAC tournament. I thought the, the, the conference did an amazing job running the tournament up at Rocket Mortgage. And our players had such a great experience overall. But... Uh, uh, still kind of a surreal experience uh, watching our players be able to to get the experience of confetti falling on their heads and getting the trophy. Well, let's bring it all the way back to uh, Northern Illinois because the the three six matchup was a was a grind. It's, uh, we talked about it. a lot of coaches talk about that. The quarterfinal first round game a lot of times are the toughest ones from a mental standpoint to get over, especially if you're a higher seed and um, a very well coached and tough uh, Northern Illinois team that. Um, you know, that, that really did a good job of trying to m- make the game uh, fall in their favor. Uh, game plan-wise, I thought they had a good game plan. They, they, they took us out of our stuff, and it was, it, was, it was a grind. That was a perfect word for it, and just proud of our, our players for working through that. You make it to, to Friday, and, I mean, that was one of the most complete games I have seen you guys play all, all year long, maybe with the exception of the second half against a Buffalo, which we'll talk about here in a second, but you, you're plus 27 on the boards. I don't think I've seen that in a Division One game in, in quite some time, let alone a conference semifinal against a very good Ball State team. Yeah, 28-5 and five Ball State team that's really, really good, and obviously we lost both of our regular season games to them, but I think – what we learned in our in our loss um, in the regular season uh, at at home, we lost 75-71. I thought we lo- learned so much from that game on film and what we were capable of. Um, I think that 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 loss really set us up for the for winning the tournament. Um, we we really kind of fine tuned some things, figured some things uh, some things out. How we were beating ourselves and. and um, we knew that we were going to have to be really good on the glass against a tough Ball State team, and our players just took that to the extreme and just dominated. I think uh, Bridget Dunn and Katie Shoemate, the way they rebounded throughout the tournament was just unbelievable. Both of them averaging double um, double doubles, and, and Bridget Dunn uh, was just averaged 13 rebounds a game in the tournament. It was just phenomenal. But you guys were so disciplined and kind of welcomed that style and – used it to your advantage well once again in the game regular season game at our place we we our our press offense was so good that we actually got them out of the press they actually stopped pressing us and um we talked about that earlier in the year i mean that's that style of play is really hard to sustain for a whole season and um i think um we kind of figured that piece out in the loss um that kind of carried forward and we we thought that they probably weren't going to press us as much because our, our transition game has gotten so much better over the last month and um, true to form, you know, they weren't able to really slow us down with, with the pressure. And I thought our players did a really good job. As, as good a passing game as I've seen from a Kent State, uh, one of our Kent State teams in a long time, we really shared the ball well um, and, and had them moving and, and did a great job with our game plan. Kudos to the players for sure. Aside from a, a bit of a surge in the in the second quarter from the Bulls, I mean that second half was again an, an absolute clinic. What did you say in the locker room that kind of needs to be bottled up and, and sold in stores nationwide? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, the, to be honest with you, it wasn't like some impassioned speech. It was let's get back to doing what we got, what got us here, what we were, what we were doing well. We had gotten away from some of those things. Our shot selection was not great in the second quarter. Uh, we never panicked, though. I, you know, I didn't see a look of panic on our players' faces in the locker room or our coaching staff. It was just, 
let's get back to what got us here. Let's let's start playing the way we have for the last few weeks. And and the and we made a few adjustments and the players just did a phenomenal job defensively. I thought we were really good and well connected. And then our offensive execution was great. And then Deanna Gray, uh, her third quarter was just something to behold. I mean, it was just so great to see her knock down those three threes. And it gave us so much energy and really carried us to the championship. Well, we'll break down the championship game. Look forward to what's going ahead in the NCAA tournament next. Upcoming on Flash Talk. We're back talking some championship hoops with Head coach Todd Starkey again. Flash talk is brought to you by Brian Heen and Cooling and and coach. You guys made that where we left off. You made those second half adjustments. Deanna Gray really is a, a shot in the arm, and you guys just hit the afterburners there in the in the probably the second half of the third and on into the fourth. Yeah, it was it was uh, it was the energy that we felt from our our fan base um, right behind us. Um, it, it felt like a completely full NBA arena. It was just a dynamic experience. But Deanna's shot making, um, I think you know, Katie Shoemate obviously hit some big shots in that stretch. But all the way down, all, all, play, all the players that got in the game contributed. Our bench had so much energy. Our coaching staff was so poised in, in talking through things and timeouts. And, and our, our players just really never, never um, – Got got shaken, you know. They just they really held their foundation all the way through, and and just had a belief. Um, I think all of them looked at Katie and and uh, how determined she was, and 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 she said, "We're not we're not losing this game," and uh, and and that carried us uh, throughout the end of the game. It was just a just an incredible experience. You can focus in on one player, but then everybody else is is going to beat you. Type type of mentality that has been the the hallmark of your team this year. Yeah, for sure. And this this truly is a team, you know. And we we say together in every huddle. And this group really does uh, function as a unit so well. And I think it's um, you know what's what what sets us apart. I mean, there, we we have some some star players, but but uh, not to the degree that it takes away from. Um, what the strength of the group, and so I think that that's been our hallmark, our depth, um, all the way through the roster. Uh, you know, Michaela Morris and Janae Tyler, both what they give us in the low post. I mean, Janae Tyler, 17 for 27 from the floor in the tournament as a freshman, um, unbelievable um, statistic for for her as well. And so just just all the way, Jenna Batch and and Elena Meyer coming off the bench and giving us, and Abby Ogle hit a huge three in that game and her steals and. Um, it was just, it was just a great, great experience for our players, and to see them thrive in that setting. What, what's kind of going through your, when your mind? Because it's, it is, it's, it's over and done with. All that's left is are the handshakes and the confetti at that point. So, take us through kind of those those final moments. Yeah, I mean, the, what what was hitting me is like eight years ago, I, I I came here and and the goal was to get this this program back to the NCAA tournament, and and we've had some teams that have been really close. I think about all of our former players that p- played for us and and that type of thing, and you know, a few years ago we had uh, some great wins, and and uh, the tournament got shut down for COVID, and and the what ifs with that scenario, and you just start wondering as a coach, are you going to be able to get that opportunity? And then to see it happening in the moment, it was just such a uh, feeling of satisfaction and to see our players, how elated they were. So happy for our staff, um, for Coach Fran, Fran Reikia, who's been with me from day one. Um, it, it, it was just a overall, it was an overwhelming uh, uh, feeling and, and, uh, and it was emotional. The watch party happens on uh, on Sunday night, and just t- talk about the atmosphere there and and seeing the the bracket reveal and Kent State's head to South Bend. Yeah, it's nothing like get hearing your school called. I mean, I've been in that situation a few times before, but but not here. And to have Kent State called um, in the bracket opposite Notre Dame, and we going to South Bend to one of the most storied women's basketball programs in the country, and and. Uh, you know what a brand to be playing in, in the first round. So we're excited about the opportunity. Obviously, it's uh, we're playing one of the giants. Uh, but it, but what a great experience. Uh, we've our our players have played in big atmospheres this year. You know at LSU and Florida State and and that type of thing. And all that was to try and prepare for moments like this. And so we want that to pay off. But just so excited for our fan base that was there for the the uh, selection show and all of our fans uh, around the country that have been texting and calling and all those type of things. Uh, we did this for, for, for them and for our former players. 
um, Kent State women's basketball alums. This this is this is for for all of them, and and excited to see um, what we you know possibly can do. Well, I'll, I'll leave you with this loaded question because we play Tuesday. Uh, excuse me, on Saturday at two fifteen at Notre Dame. You get to tell your story on the national stage. What do you want that that story to be about for your team? Well, I mean, the story is going to be about uh, this group of young young women who just believed from the start that we had the ability to do this, and um, and even when people were doubting us after some tough losses and that type of thing that we could get here, uh, those those young ladies they didn't lose hope and they 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 stuck with us and they continued to work and they've put themselves in this moment and they and they deserve it and so. Uh, it's a great thing for Kent State University, for the Kent community, and and uh, we want to represent uh, this this university and 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 this town um, the very best we can. Again, Saturday, two fifteen in South Bend. You need to be there, or you can watch it on the Mothership ESPN. Coach, congratulations, well deserved. Appreciate it. Go Flashes. And we're back with the championship edition of Flash Talk. We're brought to you by Brian Heating and Cooling. Now we're talking with Bryce Biggin. Co MAC champions in the regular season for women's gymnastics it has a pretty nice ring to it. It certainly does. It's a lot, a lot of work goes into it, and I'm really proud of the team for everything they've been able to accomplish. I mean, you guys have put together a phenomenal regular season, and uh, as a result, up to number 23 in the latest national rankings. And you and I were talking just briefly uh, before we started filming here. We think that's the highest since 2011 when you guys went all the way to the national tournament. Yeah, you know, anytime you can be up in the top 25 in any sport, it really says a great deal about the type of season you've had. And, um, you know, that was a year, obviously, that, that was very special for us. Um, got us all the way to the national championships. And, you know, anything can happen. I, I know with this team, we feel really good about where they're at and their confidence. And uh, it just takes one meet to get there, so... Well, you guys are certainly trending in the right way. You top 197 once again on a, on senior day, and really, you you close the MAC regular season out. Yeah, you know, to be able to do that on senior day obviously was really special for this group of seniors. Um, you know, and it's some, something that during a senior meet, emotions run high. The kids are always you're never quite sure what you're going to get. Um, really proud that they were able to keep everything in check. Just focus on what they had been all season and really, you know, lock out the, the regular season co-champions. Well, over the last month, you have kind of raised the standard of expectations with, with each and every meet to when 197 would have been a program, program record, and now it seems to be the norm. Yeah, it was interesting because the girls talked a little bit about that. The seniors talked about that yesterday, saying, you know, the beginning of the year, you, you kind of start hoping for the 196s. And then they really started believing in themselves and what they were capable of doing. And the expectation going into yesterday was we would we needed to be 196.5, 196.6 or above. And to be able to reach the 197 plateau again was just phenomenal. Well, what's been the, the big key for you guys to maintain this momentum and this overall success? Yeah, you know, the depth is something that we talk about every year. And really, it is truly one of the most important things that you can create, I think, in any sport. But we have, we have girls that are battling out for spots every single week. And that's a great problem to have. It's tough on the individuals. We understand that. But as a team it really elevates their level of intensity to want to stay into a lineup or to want to get into a lineup. So it's really helped us out this year. There are two or three people fighting for maybe one spot. We got to see who is kind of really focused in mentally on, on meet day. And how often are you guys having those conversations right up until that last moment? Uh, just about every meet, <laughs> which once again is a good problem to have. Um, and, and it does. It keeps the girls on their toes because they understand they're in a battle to get into the lineup. And if they don't bring it that day, then they're going to find themselves on the outside, which is tough to do. But once again, it's all for the team. So they understand, you know, you have to be ready to go that day on meet day. Well, now our, our expectations and our focus shifts to uh, the Mid-American Conference meet. It, it's out at Ball State, a place where you guys competed once already this season. Does that give you guys uh, a little bit of uh, a sense of calm, knowing that you've 
been inside that gym before and kind of know what the layout's going to be and the expectations are? Yeah, I think anytime you're able to actually compete in the same arena that you're going to for a championship, it, it gives you just a little bit of an advantage. They know what the lighting's like. They know what the entire arena's like. They've been on the equipment. So it gives them just a, that little bit of an advantage of, you know, being just a little bit more comfortable that day. What all gets underway on Saturday afternoon down, out in Muncie. Coach, congratulations on this piece of hardware. Let's get it some company this weekend. Yeah, that's the plan. Let's take a look at our busy weekend around Kent State Athletics. As always, we're brought to you by KSUTix.com. Our weekend gets started on Thursday with our wrestling team setting some individuals as alternates to the NCAA Wrestling Championships in Kansas City. Best of luck to those guys. On Friday, baseball takes on St. Joe's as part of their spring bake week. First pitch on Friday is at 3 p.m. On Saturday, our women's lacrosse team hosts Robert Morris. That's a 1 p.m. first draw at Dick Stadium. Be sure to wear your powder blue. It's a powder blue out. As we mentioned earlier, gymnastics is taking on the MAC championships at Ball State. That gets underway on Saturday at 2 p.m. Our women's basketball team will tip off at Notre Dame in the NCAA tournament. That's 2.15 p.m. And baseball has its middle game against St. Joe's. That's a 3 p.m. first pitch out at Schoonover Stadium. And on Sunday, baseball wraps its weekend with the Hawks of St. Joseph's with a 1 p.m. first pitch at Schoonover Stadium. For tickets and further information about your favorite teams, visit us on the web at kentstatesports.com. Back with more Flash Talk right after this. Welcome into our Flash Talk studios. We're brought to you by Brian Heating and Cooling. Dan Griffin talking some ball with Coach Burns, and that, that feels awful good, Coach, because winter conditioning is done, and we're into the spring season. I mean, crazy. <laughs> Eight weeks of winter conditioning is basically over, and I mean, now we're here with spring ball. It's going on, and we're, we're getting better each day, but it's just crazy how quick it is. I feel like we just finished the, the Northern Illinois game yesterday. <laughs> You're telling me. between I mean, it's got to be a blur for you guys, but talk a little bit about that, that winter condition we've seen some of the highlights on on social media but this is the work that you guys are doing behind the scenes that teams across the country are doing behind the scenes that fans really don't appreciate the work you guys are doing yeah I mean I credit our players a lot they had a, a great off uh, a great off season eight weeks of just really getting bigger faster stronger uh, our mantra this year is all in you know we're, we're talking about being all in and, and really being intentional about our work and everything we're doing. Guys know how to do things now. They've been here for a year, the majority of them, about 80% of the roster was here last year. Uh, now, how do we do it at the highest level and, and able to compete while doing it? And I think that's the challenge that we're that we're trying to attack right now and face, and so far, so good. I mean, the guys are doing a great job with it. Well, let's talk about spring ball because you only get a limited amount of practices. It's not like the fall where you guys can practice every single day. You get a, a finite number of uh, opportunities to get better. So what is a part of the, the mantra like that, that all in that you guys are trying to accomplish each and every day? Yeah, I think we're attempting to become better situational football players. I think we've got a good understanding of what we're doing offensively and defensively, but how can we put them in a, into different situations to make sure we're effective in the situation? If it's third down, if it's goal line short yardage, uh, if it's backed up coming out, how do I execute that play within that situation is our big thing. And that's what we're going to try to accomplish over the next you know, 15 practices. I think 12 of them we actually practice, and we got a couple scrimmages as well, and then obviously the spring game. But uh, I, I like our team right now. I, I couldn't say that all the time last year, uh, but I really like this football team, and, and I like the people that we've got on our team, and that's where it starts. And we've done – thanks to our indoor facility, that it's going to be either rain or shine. So – Pay attention to KentStateSports.com and at Kent State Football on your favorite social media to figure out the, the details for those. And then, obviously, Flash Bowl, too. And, uh, you guys are going, again, all in on, on a spring game. And always some cool uh, little gimmicks that go on with a spring game across the country. Well, first, just the team, the competitiveness of the team. Which sure. team am I on? Coach everything, which is which is pretty cool. Uh, but then our coaches as well, splitting those guys up in, in, in half and going with both ways. And then we're doing a little bit something a little bit different. I can't tell you quite yet what we're doing with the with how we're having our honorary coaches this year. You know, last year we had two former players. Uh, this year will be a little bit different, but uh, it should be really competitive. And knowing the two people that we're going to have, I, I know it's going to be one that fans are going to want to see. Well, you had mentioned something interesting a, a, a little bit ago that 80% of this team is coming back. It was a young team last year. And it can, in retro, in, honestly, it's still been a, a little bit of a young team this year, but it's a veteran young team. So who are some of these veterans that really stepped up in, in winter conditioning? Maybe somebody, obviously the seniors, but somebody that kind of has taken that leap that you're real proud of. Yeah, you know, we we played three true freshmen up front at the offensive line position with Cecil Wilson, uh, uh 
uh, Andrew Page was calling, Andrew Page, was calling the offense and, then, and making the checks. Yeah, I mean, he was one too. And then Chris Farrell's the other one that all played our front. And, you know, to see those guys walk around now, they're walking around as if they're veteran players. And that's what you want, right? They're, they're walking around very confident in what they're doing. And I think the world was kind of asking me, like, why didn't you go in the portal and get more O-linemen? Well, these guys are all here. They just need to develop and become bigger, faster, stronger. And they've done that. And I've been so impressed with that group in particular and how they've kind of – worked and then you know the it's it's crazy because they're working extremely hard but then you got some veterans like cj west and and and, uh, krishan and luke who i mean look different right now they're playing more confident they know what they're doing in the system which is which is always great i'm excited about our football team and yeah we're still extremely young but i feel like this team's got a crack on their shoulder uh, to prove the world that they're they belong and, and i think you're seeing that with how they go about their business well and lastly just give the fans something that they were going to be able to expect they come to a spring game and how are they going to be be in, be involved i know we've seen guys even participate in seven on seven drills that's always a a kick to me to you're going to see just how fast everything kind of moves yeah it's not one of those deals where they get to spectate <laughs> if you come to fan day or, or kid appreciation day or, or student day i mean you're going to be involved we're going to get you around the players get you maybe doing some of the stuff they do and see how good how good you think you are and, and see if it's really as easy as you think it is. So it's it's a lot of fun, and it's it, our players love it and the fans love it as well. Well, that is coming up on the Saturdays in April. Coach Burns, I know you're a busy man. Let's uh, get back to it. It's spring ball, and the Flash Bowl, too, will be here before you know it. Yeah, no doubt. I appreciate you having me on, and go Flashes, Kent Grit. That's going to do it for this championship edition of Flash Talk, brought to you by Brian Hing and Cooling. Join us once again next weekend when we take another deep dive into the wonderful world of Kent State Athletics. For all of us here inside the GFTV studios, this is Dan Griffin saying goodnight and go Flashes.